Today on Calm Talk, I'm going to make my little sister do something she doesn't want to do. No, no. It's just sin. <laughs> okay, what is happening here? Where are we? Glix, give us a situation report. Currently, we are on the planet Geekery. Be warned, our impossibility drive may cause distortions okay. as we traverse this land. Impending impossibility engaging in three, oh two, oh dear. one. <laughs> Hello, Devoted Geeks. Welcome to episode 95 of Calm Talk, the podcast extension of Geek Devotions, the show for Devoted Geeks who are devoted to letting you know that you are loved. I'm Dallas, and today we are joined by someone very special to me. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause to my baby sister, Damara. What's up, y'all? That's about as much excitement you're getting, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We need to get some more coffee in you. Today, ladies and gentlemen, Demer and I are going to be having an interesting conversation. Earlier this week, if you guys are part of our, not earlier this week, it was actually a couple weeks ago, but if you're part of our uh, Twitch streams, I was playing a game called Gundam Versus, and it was an interesting uh, Gundam game. Um, apparently, it doesn't last very long because all the online play is dead, so that's fun, but... It was nice watching. Oh, good. <laughs> I did. I did. I log in sometimes. <laughs> so you guys found out I'm a big Gundam fan. We talked about why I like Gundam. And I mentioned my uh, it's something Demare and I share. Yep. So I was like, you know what? Let's have Demare on the show to talk about Gundam, talk about why we like Gundam and all that good stuff. But let's uh, let's do a quick introduction. Demare. Demare, who are you? What do you do? And what do you geek out about the most? Okay. I feel like this is a loaded question. <laughs> who am I? Okay. I am... Who is Demera? Apparently weird. <laughs> okay. So I, I am your little sister. Um, I claim that title. Yes. People can fight me for it and lose. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so job-wise, I am a licensed professional counselor. Right. Uh, it sounds as far away from being geek as possible, but incredibly nerdy at the same time. But I <laughs> promise you, if you meet counselors, we actually, there's a lot of geekiness in us. Yes, there are. Let's, let's just remove the cover and show the <laughs> truth. Um, so, yeah. Um, I like what I do. I also love ministry and working with teenagers, adults, everyone. Usually counseling-wise, I deal with more of the difficult cases, the ones that are like trauma multiple issues with you know everything right so i'm sorry i'm learning how to use a microphone <laughs> when i'm not singing right i'm not singing for y'all today that's oh, not happening don't oh, ask man the bear's gonna do our theme song later no <laughs> the answer to that is just no <laughs> <laughs> so what's your big geek out your biggest thing that you geek out i mean we're talking about gundam today but what is the biggest thing that you just you geek out about the most okay uh, I don't think there's one thing though. I really don't. I okay. mean, you've grown up with me. You know, there's there's a lot that's out there. <laughs> We're really scattered <laughs> with our geekdoms. <laughs> Completely. We're in every field. I think. Okay. Um, I think as a child, it was more on the nerdy side mm -hmm. for a bit. Um, obviously Disney. Mm -hmm. I wish Les was in here. She would totally back me up on that one. Um. Hmm. That's really hard. I know. That's that's very hard. Okay, well, obviously Gundam is definitely part of it. Mm -hmm. I did like I was I was an anime fan, multiple different shows and stuff. Um, right. I will mention um, Escaflone. Escaflone, that was a good anime. Yeah, we watched that first time when we were Ash Grove, I think. No, no, well, yes, because it was on TV for a short while. Yeah, that, I think that was the first time we really saw it, and then we never got to see the whole thing until we went and bought it as adults because <laughs> our geekiness <laughs> was still very much alive. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, we Star Wars. We saw every Star Wars film ever right. made together. You're a big Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah, huge Lord of the Rings fan. Um, and eventually The Hobbit. I have mm -hmm. actually read the books. I'm not one of those people who didn't do both. <laughs> I did now, Did both. you ever read The Similarian or the whatever it was called? The Sam I don't know. I don't think I finished it, <laughs> but that's because I didn't start reading it until I was an adult. And adults don't have lives sometimes. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, um, no, I think... My biggest geek out is probably stuff that has to do with architecture and archaeology, like yeah. Egypt and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So past that, I mean, it just gets wide. <laughs> it's cool. So, guys, we're going to be talking about... And coffee. Coffee, yes. Maybe a little bit of tea. We're doing the tea thing today, y'all. <laughs> I may have should have gotten the coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. So, guys, we're talking about Gundam today. And so maybe maybe you're new to um, to some of the stuff and you've never heard of Gundam. 
Um, I know, fun story, um, years ago when our senior pastor first um, came to the church, <laughs> he had a little like worksheet for all the staff to fill out. It was just to find out interest stuff of us, interesting things about us. And he's like, what's the show that you love watching? And so I put in Gundam and he was really confused. He's like, what is this? <laughs> so, so let me off of the wiki page. What is Gundam? Every academic just screamed, what is wrong with you? That's what just happened right there. <laughs> All right. Mobile Suit Gundam, also known as Kido Sinchi Gundamu, uh, also known as First Gundam, Gundam 0, uh, 0079, or simply Gundam 79, or for me, just simply Gundam, is an anime television series produced by and animated by Nippon Sunrise, created uh, and directed by Yoshiyuki Tominio, and premiered in Japan on Nagoya Broadcasting Network and is affiliated with a and Studios, our stations, on April 7th, 1979. Uh, it lasted until January 26th of 1980, spanning 43 episodes. It was the first Gundam series, which was subsequently been adapted into numerous sequels and spin-offs set in futuristic calendar year of Universal Century 0079. Notice it came out in 1979. 0079 was the, was the thing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> the plot was focus, uh, plot focuses on the war between the principalities of Xeon and the Earth Federation with the lateral unveiling of a new giant robot known as the RX-78-2 Gundam, piloted by teenage civilian mechanic Amuro Ray. And that is the... That's the summation of the original franchise, or original Gundam series. But like I said, it branches out from that there are tons of Gundam series out there, and I mean just a ton of them out there. We have stuff like Gundam Wing, which was popularized uh, in the early 2000s thanks to Toonami. Um, you have the original Gundam series. You have a plethora of movies based off of the, or not movies, but franchises and movies based off of it. I think the most recent entry in the original timeline is actually Gundam Unicorn, which you can see on Netflix right now. Mm-hmm. And um, there's just, there's a lot out there. A whole lot of Gundam out there. And they all kind of follow the same basic pattern. And that is that there's uh, a conflict and there's some sort of new top secret robot. Um, And there's a young person who is thrust in the middle of war that has to deal with it. And they are thrusted into the Gundam and they have to pilot last minute. And they have to make a decision on how they're going to handle this from that point forward. And that's kind of like the basic premise of almost every French, every main series. Mm-hmm. of Gundam and uh, over the years um, Demare and I have watched several of them <laughs> and so I'm sitting here counting going how many <laughs> how many what how many that you've watched how many different series we've oh, watched I don't know Cause... oh I'll google it I'm about to say <laughs> let's just get googly right here live why not I know for a fact at least four or five unless you separate seed are you, you're talking about universes, mm-hmm. not series. That's that's different. <laughs> yeah, I want to say there's maybe four or five Gundam universes, uh, mm-hmm. and those who are listening, you're welcome to reach out to us and correct us. Um, trying to find a thing that says how many series there are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we pause the recording for a second to do some research. And the question became of how many series there were. Now, a thing about Gundam is that there's different universes, parallel universes they've created over the years. And they all kind of, they have some similarities, some more so than others. In the original timeline, Universal Century, there are 24 different series and movies, 61 mangas, and 26 novels just in the canon of the Universal Century. That's a lot. This doesn't include like Gundam Wing or any of the other franchises. <laughs> That's still a lot. <laughs> I'm serious. And if we actually had time, we could research the rest of it, and that would probably still be just as large. It'd probably be its own separate podcast. Probably. We don't have time for that today, mm-hmm. though. I'm sorry. It's all good. So, so let's, uh, let's talk about some Gundam the Mirror. What is your experience with Gundam? Um, like as far as like in life or like, like how did you get involved with it? Like how like how have you watched it over the years? Like how did you get involved in watching Gundam? Well, I think 
our first experience with Gundam was just seeing it on a Saturday morning TV show, you know, back when they actually showed cartoons. Was it Saturday, Saturday morning, morning? Was it ta- or was it Toonami on after school? No, I think Gundam, I think the first time was Ash Grove, in fact, because we had we couldn't see the whole image because we didn't get the full station. And I think we got glimpses of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I that, forgot about that. It came yeah, on that weird channel. That was the first time. And I think we were interested and we couldn't really obviously see it because right. we, we did get the station. That was back, you know, before. I mean, we lived out in the country. There was no cable or anything. It was just. We had bunny ears with a little foil attached to them. Yeah, we got lucky to get that even. <laughs> um, and there were several shows that were like that that we were interested in that we had to go back and find. Yeah. But that was the first time we'd ever even seen Escaflone, which is yep. sort of, but not yeah. Gundam. Yeah, it, it, it falls under the realm of, um, I think the journal is called Real Robot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So beforehand, uh, before Gundam came out, you had the giant robot franchise or not franchise genre, which was, you know, giant robots. And normally it was like good giant robot versus bad giant robot. Mm -hmm. This was the first time you had what they called real robots where um, you had, it was a darker lines were blurred of right and wrong. And Mm -hmm. the robot was just a robot. It wasn't anything magical about it. It wasn't like uh, Voltron or, or any of those other ones. Mm -hmm. So um, Escaflowning, I think it'll fall under the real robot genre. Yeah. Okay, your mic just being creepy and all that stuff. <laughs> it's all right. All right, so all right, so that's how we got into it. But like, how did you fall in love with it? Like, why? What about the series just caught your attention? Um. Okay. So, I think what really got my attention was the fact that it wasn't extremely like kid like. Mm-hmm. It was far more of you almost had a sense of a real world thing going on. But it was still fantasy, and there was so much scientific stuff going on in it and all that stuff. I think that was different from, I mean, all the other cartoons that we were seeing. Mm-hmm. So it was a mixture of the the, fan, the fantastical sci-fi elements with some of the realism that caught you? Uh, surprisingly so, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that was probably the first time a cartoon like that captured our attention where it wasn't like a whole bunch of really mysticism or anything. It was, there was hey, what would happen if these were real mm-hmm. type thing? But it was still completely fantasy. Right. So I know like for you and I, our first Gundam was probably Gundam Wing, which uh, that sh- that series, it, it premiered on Toonami. And uh, the premise of it was that there was some sort of um, secret organization that had sent what the operation, what they called Operation M to Earth with some individuals, uh, pilots, who were basically piloting five different Gundams Mm -hmm. and um, each one kind of had their own personality, their different quirk. Each Gundam had its own, I don't want to say special ability, but expertise. Yeah. And what it did. Um, And it followed a lot of interesting trains. I I know that some people feel like it's kind of boring on the front end and the first couple episodes are kind of political stuff. But within that, what were the elements that caught you? within that in that franchise that line up with that whole like you know the sci-fi but also there's the seriousness of it so i guess we should specify which gundam series really was the first one we saw the entirety of it Mm -hmm. and that was gundam wing right um so i think what really captured the attention of it was i mean for starters when we go back and we watch it now they look it looks a little old (laughs) but back then it wasn't that old to us Mm -hmm. but it was the fact that you had um, teenagers that were obviously quite intelligent. Yeah. But they blended so well, and it was such an arrangement of personality that you could pick a character, kind of identify with them to some extent, even for a girl to mm-hmm. do that. Um, And you could just feel like, hey, teenagers could operate a machine one day or something weird <laughs> like that. But the political stuff didn't really get my attention. I think it was the humanity of everything and the actual Mm. care and the lives and stuff that was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, operating a giant Gundam and the fight scenes were definitely a plus, but (laughs) (laughs) yes. Very cool. So um, we've watched several Gundam over the years. Mm -hmm. What is the franchise? I'm not at, this isn't the, the question you don't want to answer. 
But what franchise of Gundam sticks out to you the most? I get well, okay. So I'm gonna I'm actually not gonna answer Gundam Wing, which I think you may have suspected that would be the first one, but I'm actually gonna say Gundam Seed because that was the one that I mean it's pretty much a two parter. You had Gundam Seed and Destiny. Mm-hmm. And we binged watched that. We did. Every night, like <laughs> three or four hours, y'all. Our if our mom had found out when we were younger, we oh, probably would have been murdered. We'd have been smoted. It would have been like resurrection is <laughs> going to have to happen in the house with that one. But we did. And I think that's why it sticks out because we binge watched so much of it so fast. Right. One of the things I told people and on, on the stream the other day was that um, it's been a franchise. Gundam has been a franchise that we, you and I kind of shared together. Like some of those memories are baked into my mind or us watching the franchise together. Different like mm -hmm. Gundam Seed, S Destiny, Double Zero. So it's the... Um, is that what's that? Is that the uh, what sticks out to you the most about it? Or yeah, I mean, we watched literally every series together, right? Every series that we could. <laughs> yeah, like we started out with Wing, right? Where we definitely sat there, and it was like biting at the bit because at the time it was coming live on TV, and so we were sitting there waiting right. for the next day well, for a thirty-minute little episode. To be fair, it was coming out live on television, pseudo. Like it, it, the series yeah. itself came out in the nineties. Toonami was airing it once a week. And we didn't have, we had friends, but they just didn't have, they weren't passing us the anime at the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, at that time, um, we we didn't even, I think that was the first time we just happened to come home one day and mm -hmm. happened to see something. We're like, wait, mm -hmm. we've seen something like this before. Yeah. <laughs> and watched it and we're like, because we watched obviously more than just Gundam. We ended right. up watching Dragon Ball Z then, mm -hmm. Sailor Moon. Mm -hmm. And it was, this, well... The other series just left my head. Tenchi Moyo? No, there's like four shows that showed up at the same time and we would watch all four. Mm -hmm. So for like two hours straight, we'd be in front of a TV and I'm sure it didn't write out very well. Funny enough, we're in the room. <laughs> I know. We're that in the we room. watched all this stuff <laughs> on. Know. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So I was just thinking about that. Um, I wish I... Oh, man. It's going to drive me nuts. Yeah. By the end of the podcast, I'm still probably not going to remember like, that name. Toonami had several different ver variations of how it worked out some stuff. You had Gundam Wing, Sailor Moon... Dragon Ball Z, and then you also had, uh, they would, at times, they went through the entire Tenshi Moyo franchise. They went through, not the franchise, but the uh, Tenshi Universe series. Uh, they went through uh, Reboot. Mm -hmm. um, a couple others. I can't remember what they were all were, though. Reboot was the name of the one that I was thinking of. Oh, yeah, Reboot. Yeah, Reboot came on first, and you went through the four. What's interesting is we watched all those as kids on that that. Same station. That, that weird show we really get. <laughs> we were like, I didn't know. I didn't know that uh, Goku's hair turned blonde in that scene because <laughs> it was all black and white when we were watching it. <laughs> and grainy. It and was grainy so grainy at the snowy. time. <laughs> so, you know, keep in mind, y'all, we were in high school by the time we finally got to see this series and like legit, this is the fullness of what the series looks like right. and all that. So it was the first time seeing Gundam Wing that way. Mm -hmm. And I think that was our first time really connecting over mm -hmm. an anime before i'd say yeah so i mean we did do escaflone but we had to go and find escaflone later mm -hmm. pokemon yeah pokemon came on in that same time period mm -hmm. but i think gundam was the one that i was like we were locked in everything stops for this yeah i remember what we were i came home from college and i had um somehow obtained copies of gundam double zero yes and we were watching it in my room. That was another binge watch moment. <laughs> and, and we were up till three o'clock in the morning going, one more. For the record, this one was more. like Friday into Saturday when we pushed to 3 a.m. <laughs> and mom was probably wondering why we weren't up. I think she got mad that mor she next did. morning because we weren't up to have <laughs> <She> breakfast. <laughs> why are you guys are sleeping all day long? We're like, we only got three hours of sleep. <laughs> no, I don't think we admitted that. We just kept our mouths shut back then. Now we're like, oh, you remember that time? And mom's like, seriously, y'all? Really? Yes. Yep. We yes. stayed up and watched the entire franchise. We were those geeks. <laughs> Oh, my god! And we didn't eat coffee back then. Nowadays, we'd probably need a little coffee to I keep I still going. don't eat coffee. I drink it personally. Okay, still. <laughs> we needed something. We needed some sort of caffeine. So, But that was the same time period we had tried chocolate-covered coffee beans. Oh, that's true. Those were good. Yes. This is not what we're talking about today. No, but. it's not. Let's get back on track. <laughs> All right. So, 
So Gundam Seed sticks out to you most because that's we have a memory locked in of us watching it together. Yeah. But what franchise, which Gundam series is like it's your favorite series? And this is I know you're looking at me or like you're you're gonna stab me. Before we <laughs> like we're talking guys, I'm telling you right now, it's behind the scenes before we're recording. Celeste and Demera were talking about it, and Demera goes, this is evil that you're making me pick one. I didn't say evil. I specifically said it's sin to ask someone to pick evil. a single Gundam <laughs> or a single series that's like, that's sin. And then Demera goes, Celeste, I'm going to kick your husband in the podcast. During the podcast. <laughs> Y'all, he has placed me far enough away, I can't actually kick him. <laughs> I'm glad you took me seriously. Uh, just fortunately, fencing taught me about spacing. Fencing each other taught you about spacing. <laughs> that, let's be legit on that one. <laughs> All right. So, favorite Gundam series. One series. What is it? Hmm. I'm going to answer this, but keep in mind, I reserve the right to change my answer later. <laughs> okay. Because it's the only way I can make myself feel better about this. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to choose. Um, I think I'm going to go with Seed. Okay. And the reason why is because I love the fact that there is a sibling pair going on in there. Because yeah. we were a pair of siblings we sitting there watching <laughs> yeah, till 3 a.m. this right. series and stuff. So I'm thinking I'm going to pick that one for now. Okay. But I will say that Gundam Wing will always have a special place. Yeah. I mean, that was our very first one. We loved it. Mm -hmm. Even watched the movie. Their story. If you don't know the full story behind Gundam Wing and even coming to the point of owning Gundam Wing, you'll have to ask Dallas privately on that one. <laughs> But, I mean, that will still hold a special place, but I am going to pick Gundam Seed for this one. I get that. And I respect that. You know, and it's funny you say that about the, the Gundam Wing. It's kind of like Whovians, and they're like, they always remember their first doctor. Mm -hmm. It's always like there's a special place. They may not have been a great doctor, but they hold a special place in their heart. So I respect that. And and Seed was a great franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny were both really good. I remember um, before we watched Seed Destiny, we had actually gotten somehow. I got a hold of the um, the movies that were summarizing S Destiny, and we watched those at Mom's house. Yeah. So it didn't do the series justice. No, it didn't. But I mean, that was the same way with Endless Waltz. It didn't mm -hmm. fully do the full series justice, but Endless Waltz was a little different. Well, Endless Waltz was a summation. It was a. It was a more of a continuation, a closing. It was a closing. Yeah, it was. A, it was a final chapter, basically. Which However, I granted, I like the wingspan better in, in Endless Waltz than I did in the original yes. series. But, I mean, it didn't make sense. Yes, to Zero have that was so much better than that one. It so, was. for me, my favorite franchise of Gundam, and this is a hard one to do. Go um, ahead and send out. <laughs> Go ahead. Feel my pain that you put me Feel through. Feel your pain. I'm going to find a way to kick you today. <laughs> We're going to get I'm up. about to grab that, that fluffy turtle and toss him at you. <laughs> fluffy turtle. <laughs> if y'all have never been in the podcast room, there's a lot of geek stuff around. And there are stuffed <laughs> animals, too. There are. One of them, I'm pretty sure that's Celeste Turtle over there. It is. Um, It's about to meet Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to meet me. <laughs> The problem is I can't get to it without messing with the mic. <laughs> so I can't All I design. <laughs> I'm going to toss a light at you, but that's expensive. Yeah, don't do that. That'd be terrible. And it might kill me, Damara. I wouldn't kill you. Damara, that kills people. Look, Lon. <laughs> Y'all, I just had like the last week of my job. And last week, one of my clients decided to bring a cup with a llama inside of it. <laughs> She did this for, like, everyone because she's like, y'all need to celebrate Easter. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is so absolutely adorable. And they bring me the one, and they had specifically chosen a llama. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel like they were having conversations secretly with my family because <laughs> I'm not a llama with hats fan. Right. I mean, it's funny. Right. But I'm not a huge fan. And here I am with this stuff a lot by my house now, y'all. <laughs> That has nothing to do with Gundam, unless no, no. it turns into a Gundam, which that'd be kind of weird. That'd be kind of cool. All right. So my favorite Gundam series. Um, I actually, 
just because of the way my mind works, I have a lot of love for the very first Gundam series. F91? No, no. F91 takes place in that series. No, Gundam, like from 1979, the very first Gundam series ever came out. That does not shock me. Uh, it doesn't shock you? No, that does not shock me. Why? I don't... I don't I, well, I mean, okay. So, I know people know you, but I know you know you, okay? <laughs> so, everyone that meets us are like, we're old souls, <laughs> And we have the tendency to latch on to our favorite movies or favorite shows are usually the oldest ones. Like, my favorite movie is what? The Mummy. From what year? Um, from right after The Mummy died originally. <laughs> from the 1930s. Way to join my geekdom over here, Dallas. So I'm not shocked that you picked one from that early right. age. Well, it's just it laid down the groundwork. And I love when other franchises point back to the roots. And you see that. Like Gundam Seed. Or not Gundam Seed. Uh, Gundam Double Zero. Uh, you see the original RX in it. Mm -hmm. um, and Gundam Seed is a direct, like, while other ones are other universes, Gundam Seed is probably a more direct parallel of the original franchise. Mm-hmm. And when there's something that's so monumental that everyone goes, we want to not just continue, but pay homage to and respect, I can't help but have love for it. And the Universal Century itself was such an interesting timeline and the way that people keep adding to it, but still keeping it nice. Like there's one franchise, I've only watched a couple episodes. It was Gundam Origins, which takes place before... The original Gundam takes place, and it kind of helps you set up some more of the groundwork of, of Xeon and all that kind of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where I'm at. But there are other ones I really have a lot of love for, obviously. I love Gundam Builders because it's so um, – Gundam Builders is a series about people building Gunpla. Mm -hmm. And like – but like it's not just like we're building them. Like they're fight, – like they fight. They put them in a machine and they, they, they fight. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh! only – better <laughs> <laughs> that was another one we didn't mention that was actually in the lineup too <laughs> that was what we watched too and so but you had but there's gundam builder and then i like also gundam iron blood orphans another franchise that you and i haven't been able to watch finish watching uh because it is so different from the other gundam series it is it's very different and i think I think you and I got a shock on that first episode yeah. of Iron Blooded Orphans, and we were locked in. But unfortunately, y'all were adults, <laughs> and Most of the as time. adults, we can't stay up till three a.m. anymore. We have jobs. <laughs> yeah, responsibilities. Yep. All right. We're still gonna make this happen one day. <laughs> okay. We may watch some today. All right. So, next question, Demar. You ready? I'm mentally preparing. I'm going to need a counselor You're, after this. <laughs> I'll give you a mirror. Talk oh, to your thank son. you. <laughs> I'll just call in Quitra. Oh, there you go. What is your... If I were to go, Demera, I have the technology. And I'm going to reach into the Gundam universe. And I'm going to pull out one legitimate, real-life Gundam out. And it's going to be yours to pilot forever and ever. Amen. What is the one Gundam you want me to reach out there and grab and pull into you, for you? Demare is currently giving you the stink eye <laughs> and not not hitting you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you specify? Um, there are three favorites that have been like since I y'all he sent me this message and I, I nearly threw my phone across the room because I didn't like the idea of answering this question because there's three of them that stick out in my mind and I've never been able to pick between the three and I'm gonna do it today but whatever <laughs> okay so I'm actually gonna pick the strike freedom oh yeah so and I think it's because it's the evolution of the strike and then when the freedom came out and it combined two really great machines and the ideology of its pilot so well mm -hmm. and what really what his pilot actually meant mm -hmm. but i also like the machine itself now mm -hmm. with that being said technically there's four gun oh but i'm goodness. gonna mention there's three honorable mentions <laughs> all right that's my so, way of skate so strike freedom is the best yeah i'm gonna pick strike freedom all right so the honorable mentions are that you will be making me okay Give, okay. me the, give me the thing. I'm looking. I'm looking, okay? <laughs> if y'all don't know, he actually does build the models 
of them. And I did ask for two that I do have already. In fact, I have um, Gundam Zero. Mm -hmm. I um, have no... I built you Death Sight. I, yeah, I have Death Sight. And then you built me a Zero. Did I? They're right next to each other. Okay. Apparently I did it. So I do... I like... I was always torn in the first series we fully watched together mm -hmm. and so death sight was one of my favorite ones i know that sounds really creepy as a christian to take out <laughs> death sight of all people um and then of course gundam zero uh, which i did like the wingspan again of inland swaltz better but mm -hmm. you know as far as realism mm -hmm. the original um obviously strike freedom and then of course there's exia mm. now just for future reference when you're doing models i do want the justice too <laughs> All right, I'll keep that logged in the back. Okay. <laughs> All right, so for me... That'll right, be making up for your sinfulness. <laughs> for me, right off the bat, boom, I'm pulling in tall geese. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that. That has been your favorite since, like, the first time tall geese popped up. It was, it, you were so faithful to tall geese. I don't know how you can pick one. It's He's just so cool. And, like, it's... I think it's because he was so different from the other Gundams. Like, as different as the other Gundams were in he Wink. He was very old school in his appearance, though. But he was just as powerful as right. the New Age stuff. But I think that personifies your entire personality. I can see that. So, but he, like, there was a there was a regalness to him, to to the Tall Geese. Very Roman. Very Roman. Um, of course, it was piloted by, by, by Zex. Mm -hmm. and he had his own, like, while he was the bad guy, like, there was this undertone of something better, which there's always that character in the Gundam series. Yeah. And, um, like, he was, like, it was like the gentleman's Gundam. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to pull in, I'm pulling the tall geese. It's just, it's just cool. It's lit. Um, Got to show love to the RX from the original franchise. Mm -hmm. There was a Gundam Mark II, this is something that they had done in Gundam Zeta, and I didn't like it. Like, they basically went, let's make it dark and edgy. I'm like, I don't want emo Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know an emo he says Gundam. That. As I pick Death Sight as one of my favorites. There's a difference between Death Sight. <laughs> the original and emo the, Gundam. And, the, and, then, <laughs> and then, then the Gundam Mark II. I'm like, I was like, congratulations. He's got black eyeliner and listening to Green Day. I mean, that's just what. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't any innovation with him whatsoever. So, like, the original Gundam is pretty cool. And then I I legitimately enjoy uh, Char's um, Red Comet Zaku. Like, I thought mm -hmm. the Zaku was always an interesting build. The Zaku in the original franchise is like the, it's like the granddaddy of all Gundams. Like, it's like, mm -hmm. or not Gundams, but mobile suits. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's, a, I, I, well, I mean, I to mean, be you honest. You want to talk about best mobile suit without it including a Gundam material into it. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was pretty beast mode. Yeah. And, and of course, some of it was just because of who Zex was. Mm -hmm. So, but I liked that one quite a bit. So, all right. Well, those are our thoughts on Gundam. You want to add anything else to Mary about why you like Gundam or anything it means to you? Um, I mean, I don't really know what even to add. I mean, other than the fact that we used to have full length conversations over what Gundams from which series would actually win overall. Yeah. So, and I think that used to freak. I think you used to pull those conversations out in front of people who didn't know I was a geek because <laughs> you would be like, Hey, let's talk about this. And I'd be pulling names out of right. my hat. And these people are like, like Whoa, what? The what? <laughs> Baby sister's a geek. Y'all, I don't is. dress like a geek. I'm sitting here wearing a coffee shirt. That's all right. That's, that's all right. it. And Dallas is across from me wearing Godzilla. <laughs> all right. So, here's a question If somebody goes, Demera, what is a good. Gundam franchise for me to start with. Where would you throw them? Um, I think it really depends on how old they are. Mm. I'm going to put that out there. And I'm saying that because if you pick something that is really old and they are someone who really is very attached to the new type of animation and stuff like that, they're not going to fly with the old stuff we used to watch. Mm -hmm. Unless they're someone who really appreciates the mm -hmm. age. If they are... Like, they're cool with, like, old school cartoons and stuff and, like, can dig it. I would tell them to go back to the original one mm -hmm. first, which is surprising. I'm pretty sure you thought I was going to pop out with, like, Gundam Wing. No, no. But I even think, um, like, New Age-wise, for, like, animation, if you're looking for that quality, you would almost have to start with Double Zero. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would not actually pick Iron Blooded Orphans for your first out there Gundam series simply because I think if you wanted to start one that was like in the middle of the road, I would actually pick C because you do have that connection to the originals. I can see that. That's a good answer. That's a, that's legitimately a solid answer. Well, thank you. Seed has a good, it's a good jumping off point because it does have so many linking points to the other franchises. Mm -hmm. And it's not old enough where the animation is necessarily going to bother It's a really clean anime. Yeah. They Uh, did a really good job. Yeah. I would, I'm kind of in the same camp with you as in the, it depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. Like if you're someone who maybe you're, you're looking more for a more intentional look at the effects of war you don't want to, some of the sensationalism because some of it, I mean, it is, listen, they all have the effects of war, but some mm-hmm. of them are a little more cut and like more like, all right, this is a little drier. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, war in pocket, which is a really great eight episode um, that kind of shows the effects of what's happening of the, in the war. So you don't necessarily have the Gundam. Yeah. And you don't have the new type, which new type is a, a term for uh, people who have, they kind of have these enhanced abilities to sense things. Mm-hmm. Um, in the original franchise, but um, that was a great one. Um, I, I love Gundam Wing. However, I think there's so much hate for it mm-hmm. because people people like to hate what's cool, <laughs> and so because like it became cool, and so it was like, oh, that's so lame, it's so overplayed. It's like, shut up, man. We all know you were rocking it out until everyone else thought it was cool too. So pretty much the same thing with um, Sailor Moon. You know, when we were growing up, you didn't talk about Sailor Moon, mm-hmm. period. And mm-hmm. now it's like that is the thing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, strangely with a vengeance. Yeah, it's, it's odd. But, <laughs> you know, if you're if you liked Gundam Wing back then, be a legit fan. Right. <laughs> and let's just be legit with yourself. There's no shame in Gundam Wing. No. So I like Gundam Wing. The beginning is a little slow. I'll give you that. Um, I also really enjoy, think a good jumping off point is Seed because of its callbacks to the original franchise. And I I went back and started watching Gundam Unicorn today. And it's really, really good. You will be a little bit lost if you don't know about the rest of the franchise because mm-hmm. they drop, they name drop hard throughout the entire just the first episode, <laughs> like they're they're mentioning Amro, the Haro, uh, um, Fraubo. They're they're mentioning the principalities of Zeon. Like there's a mm-hmm. lot of history, and I think that's part of the problem is there's so much history there. But it's super. It, it grabs your attention. So those are those are kind of my thoughts and my my ideas for you guys. Yeah. No, I haven't actually watched the Unicorn series. I thought you had. I think I've seen a few, but I always had to stop because I mean I was an adult when. Mm-hmm. We got our hands on the unicorn series, but I will put out there. Okay, if y'all know my family, they got on this trip that they're going to buy a million unicorns in every color known to man. <laughs> to the point where I actually had to put a rule: you cannot get me a unicorn unless I get this color unicorn first. <laughs> and and I underestimated my sister in law because she is legit beast mode, y'all. If you want to find something, <laughs> you talk to Celeste; she'll find it for you, or she will make it for you. Right. <laughs> Uh, that's how we could break the rules. We can get you a Gundam unicorn. Okay, legit. I will <laughs> agree to that one because it makes us Gundam. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I, I did have I had a revelation. If you want to jump into the original UC universe, mm-hmm. Universal Century, Gundam Origins is literally the beginning of the franchise. Like there are small things that if you've watched the rest of it, you'd be like, oh, that's this, that's that. But if mm-hmm. you want one of those ones, you're like, I want a progressive story. Mm-hmm. Start with that one. Um, it, Cause it will make seeing the other stuff interesting. And if you're like, Hey, I don't want to watch the entire series of the original Gundam because mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot. It's 48 episodes. What, what made Gundam, the original Gundam popular. Cause it actually failed originally mm-hmm. was, um, I don't think I knew it failed. Yeah, it got canceled and then got brought back because of toy sales. And then where it really blew up was they took the entire franchise or the entire series and they chopped it down into three movies. Mm-hmm. They kind of summarize the series, takes out some of the uh, the filler uh-huh. and cleans up some of the animation on certain things and got released in theaters in Japan. Oh, that was probably a great way to restart it, which I mean... <laughs> Japan is legit when they come up with some of these animated series. Oh, yeah. With what they do anyways. Absolutely. I mean, mad props to them for 
creativity Word? and all of it. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that would be my, that, that, that's my recommendation. Watch Gundam Origins and then watch the three-part uh, Gundam movie series. Mm-hmm. And that's a good start to go, okay, and then check out the rest of the stuff too. Um, yeah. So there we go. Well, Demare, how's it feel to have geeked out today talking about Gundam? Uh, it just feels like every day for us. <laughs> it's <laughs> it not does. that unusual. It may freak everyone else out that's not used to me talking. <laughs> All right, guys, that's our show. I forgot to mention, this is Anime April. That's why we're doing this, is because we're talking about anime all month long. Um, if you guys uh, want to get hold of the Mara, uh, you have to get a hold of me. I am the gatekeeper. Plus, she's a counselor, so she legally can't just have stuff out there for you. Yeah, sorry, y'all. <laughs> Everything is literally shut down to full private. So, but um, if you want to check out more of the stuff we've been doing for Anime April, Check out our website, geekdevotions.com. All of our devotions this month have been based off animes. Uh, we have some articles up on our website this month. We did a review on Dr. Stone. We did a review on Way of the House Husband. I got one that I'm working on right now on Lupin the Third. Mm-hmm. Uh, the It's like the 50th anniversary movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, some guest articles are coming out <clears throat> where people are writing in about um, their favorite anime and why. Our friend Danny just put out one last week about... His favorite anime, which is My Hero Academia. Fantastic. That is. Um, we got one coming. I have f- no idea what episode I left off on that. Oh, you need to catch back up. Yeah, I got to do that. Um, and then we have our friend John, who is one of the co-hosts for our podcast, uh, for one, our segment podcast called Priv- Primitive Rhythm Machine, which is our music podcast. And um, John's written in one talking about Samurai Champloo and, uh, and a couple other things. Uh, so that's the thing. I might have an article later this week. Talking about a really interesting anime. Um, for those who don't know, I will be on the Cellcast podcast uh, this weekend, or next week rather. Uh, but we're recording on their Twitch channel on Tuesday, and we're going to be talking about Tenchi Moyo the movie. Oh my lord! Oh yes. How did that not land on? Okay. <laughs> so we're talking about Tenchi Moyo the movie. And I'm surprised I'm, this whole month is not about Tenchi. I we need to spread out the love, Tamara. You only love Tenchi sometimes. Y'all, like, he's a, like, fanatic about Tenchi. Don't let him, like... No, I... It's not that I get into mo- I get into modes where I'm on certain things. So, but plus, uh, just focusing on Tenchi isn't necessarily marketable right now because there's not a lot of Tenchi stuff out there right now. I'm just putting out there, they need to ask, <laughs> what did you used to have to hand kids in kids' church to allow them to speak? <laughs> That's a great question for the week. If you take a guess and send me your answer. So that being said, but we're going to be talking about Tenchi Moyo, the movie, and I might be doing a write-up review for our website later. Um, so all that being said, I want to encourage you guys to check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just look for Geek Devotions. Check out our website, geekdevotions.com. And do us a favor. If you like this podcast, if you enjoyed this, if you want, maybe maybe you would like, you know what? I need more to bear on the show. Let us know. Um... Leave a comment on the YouTube version of this. I'm cool with it. Just saying. <laughs> Send us uh, some messages. But also just a favor, guys. This is a big deal. Go on Apple uh, Podcast and leave a review of our show. It helps to get the word out about who we are. Also, there's a website called Pod Chasers. Uh, leave a review on that also. And what we're going to start doing is um, whenever you guys do that, uh, we're going to grab a couple and we're going to read a few of your reviews. So that's the thing that's taking place. I also want to encourage you guys to stay tuned because here in, a, here in the next couple of weeks, Celeste and I have a major announcement that we're going to be giving you guys. So. I don't think I even know what this announcement is, y'all. I'm going to be with right with y'all. Dun, dun, dun. So ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay devoted. Peace and love. Peace and love.